and we're looking at the Yotaphone. That's its working title for now. It's just a prototype. Um, I'm joined by Vlad and Lau from Yota Devices in Russia, and um, we're going to give you a quick overview of this very innovative handset. So from the front, it's a regular Android phone. Um, we've got a HD front-facing camera up there, HD screen, uh, 1280 by 720, um, and it's running Jelly Bean, right? Yes, right. right. So, so it's, it's a standard Android phone. One difference, though, and it's a big one, is that um, Yota Devices is, is playing here with a different kind of navigation, so that, for example, there are no home buttons down here. Um, for multitasking, you'll, you'll press and hold there. Uh, let's see, press and hold, and you get multitasking. And if you want to go back, you can do a half swipe. Or if you want to do, uh, let's see, home. Let's try. Let's, okay, so we're into the a weather app. Um, we do a full swipe. And that takes us home. So there are like swipes because they've extended the capacitive layer all the way down to the bottom. Um, so uh, other bits are also familiar. We have a 3.5 mil jack on the top. And this is quite interesting. If you see up there, we have a um, combined SIM tray and power button. Um, and you guys are toying with the idea of making that you can swipe to open it. Yeah, well, first of all, we believe the future smartphones will have no buttons and no holes. So we are making few, few, few uh, first steps to, to basically reach this vision. Okay, so it doesn't work yet. It may be in the final version, the ability to swipe and open the SIM tray. But for now, it's a combined SIM tray and power button. Um, not much on this side except an, a magnetic charge point, which um, is likely to go, and then sort of lots of seams and stuff around the edge. Slightly unsightly, but this is just a prototype, and that should all go. Anyway, what makes this interesting, of course, is when you flip it round, uh, which reveals the 12 megapixel camera at the bottom. Yes, 12 megapixel. Right. But also this 200 for now, 200 DPI e-ink screen, which could be improved by the time this is ready in Q3. And um, this is all about displaying information permanently or for a long period of time on the back without draining the battery, and. Of course, for that to work, we need to be able to send information from the front to the back. And Vlad, you're going to show us how that works exactly, because there are a couple of ways to do it. Yeah, there are several applications we developed, uh, uh, and this is right now represented on a display. As you can see, you can pick up any kind of wallpaper with clocks or without clocks. You can, like, say, let's put this one on the back. So, and uh, this specific picture will pop up mm -hmm. on, on the back screen. Show so, us that button. So you've you've on on your own yeah. apps, the ones that you've you've either customized or built up from scratch. We have a special button there, which just means yeah. send to the back. Yeah, this one. Okay, got you. And there is another way that you can make a gesture like this, using two fingers from top down. And that gesture is to mirror. So it's just a mirror. It, for example, you go to the gallery, and pick up the image. Uh, so let's see. For example, the boarding pass. You do this gesture, and you see your boarding pass on the back side. Okay, and that works in any app if we try the browser? Y yes, okay. basically yeah. you, you, try can, that. You, you can mirror like the homepage. Let's page. try that. For example, we pick up this homepage and we do it. Okay, so so that's a good start in terms of, let's say you're reading um, the Amazon Kindle app yeah, or by the, way, there is a the Engadget homepage. Yeah, we can uh, open our app readers and we can do this, we can put it in the back. And you can put it on the back. And but then we can read the book and sw swipe. Okay, but there's a second layer there, which is if you're, you, you've sent something to the back, but then to interact with the app, that screen on the back is not capacitive all the way across, it's just the bottom part. So if you turn it back around to the e-ink display. Right. So, you know, here is the home screen. This is um, Android, but I can't touch That's right. here to, to do anything. The That's only correct. place that works is this lower part. Well, there are several reasons why we did this way. We did, first of all, a lot of research uh, in terms of user experience. If it's touch, it's consume more power. And one of the uh, one of the key features, unique features, you can substantially um, uh, increase the, the time you use the phone when you're reading, when you get notifications, or you do a lot of stuff with electronic paper display on the back. So if we do a full touch, that's, that's not so so substantial. So the second, uh, second reason is you do a lot of readings. You want to have the screen kind of open uh, for, for reading. So mm -hmm. if you use the full touch, it's 
not obvious it's the best user but experience. With this FB reader, you can you've you've figured out you, you page swipe, so yeah. I can I can swipe. You can also pick up applications if you do a long click like this, and uh, you can uh, pick up different applications. Uh, for the back screen. Again, this is a different purpose. The second, the electronic paper display, it's not just a copy of the main display. Mm. It's provide you with completely new user experience. It serves a different purpose. It, it addresses uh, different challenges, uh, uh, the way users interact with a Sure, smartphone. but I'm getting at something yeah. very specific. I, I read a lot of e-books. I, I use the Kindle app to read e-books. So, you know, that's one of the things that really makes me interested in this mm -hmm. as a concept. But what I'm saying is, if I've sent the Kindle to the back screen, to the e-ink screen, can I turn the page? Yes, you can. Well, well you, how, I mean, how does you, that work you, if it's not capacitive? Well, you, you, you will can. First of all, we, it's the first prototype. We're still playing with the software. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, different scenarios uh, how it will be at the end product. So we will try our best to make sure that the end product it will be uh, like you described for the Kindle. Okay, okay. So you're going to find a way to make sure that even without you tweaking the apps individually, that if I was, for example, to load up Kindle here, send it to the back, that you would be able to make this a page swipe exactly. on the Kindle yeah, exactly. without having to work, you know, without having to customize the app. It would just be the regular. Exactly. Okay. Um, and that's something you're, you're, you guys are really going to make happen um, by the time this launches. Exactly. And this will be out in Russia in, um, uh, towards the, well, the second half of next year? Yes, it will be uh, introduced in Russia in Q3 uh, next year, uh, and then internationally uh, with the larger operators uh, in Q4 next year. And realistically, I mean, what are the chances of it coming next year on, on uh, internationally? It's very realistic. We already work with the main operators on our other products, which are LT modems and routers, uh, and we're already in a dialogue with this uh, operator. Mm -hmm. And obviously, this is a very interesting product for the operators. Uh, and by the way, it's a huge differentiation for operators. If you go today to any global operator's uh, retail shop, you can see like all kinds of devices similar to each other. And I think, uh, I mean, our product could really differentiate the operator uh, from, from others. You're promising to um, make a number of changes by the time this comes to market. We've already said you're going to remove um, sort of the seam around the edge, change right. the, the case of the volume locker over there. Um, but the guts will stay broadly the same. And this has a Snapdragon S4 inside, right. a dual core 1.5 gigahertz. And uh, this HD screen, the thing is, by the time we get to that stage of next year, these are good, spec, good specs for now. But, you know, this won't seem... So you won't be able to market as a, like a top-end phone no. um, by the time Q3 comes around. Uh, uh, you factored all of that in? Uh, yes, we did. Uh, and, well, of course, there are certain things we can't change because the production process uh, requires some time. Uh, but there are certain things you can change. For example, if uh, Google come up with a new Android, I think it's uh, possible to change and uh, make sure it's the latest and the greatest version. Uh, also... Uh, if it's not possible, it's okay. There are some components will be not the latest and the greatest. It all comes down to the price. And again, first, uh, first and the most important is the whole user experience we create for the electronic paper display. This is the key differentiation. This is where we spend 80 or 90 percent of our time and efforts. And by the way, we have a big software engineering team in Moscow, St. Petersburg, who is working on these applications and SDK for the whole Android community, uh, developer, developers community, to, to bring their applications for the, for the, for the EPD display. The um, APK will just be um, focused on allowing people to, to put in that button that you, you have, the, the send to the, to the rear screen button. Exactly. That's, that's one of the key aspects exactly. of the APK, APK, allowing people to put that into their apps. Yes. Yeah. And for them to also do that intelligently. I send the right information. Let's say, for example, we want to put calendar information. So I want to see my upcoming appointments. That's 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 doable now. Yeah, is yes. it so? Well, we created a certain number of applications which believe will be in great demand and critical to set the example. Uh, like, uh, but uh, again, we'd like to give an opportunity for developers to be creative and basically either develop from scratch just completely new application or to port what they have currently yeah. uh, in the Google Play market. So, I mean, we are already only talking about this phone uh, in public now, and already in the last couple of days we had so much interest in new apps and new ideas that you could actually uh, use this back screen for. There's a whole new world of... Uh, and I would, say, I would say, if it was, I, I, we really appreciate uh, there's such a positive feedback yeah. from Android community we've seen yesterday. It's the first time we basically start talking about this product. There was such a positive uh, feedback uh, about this product and opportunity, so thanks to Android community. 
Great. Now, um, so the reason I was sort of getting at the, the idea of mid, whether the specs would be mid-range by the time it comes out is, is it is about price. You know, how much premium are we going to expect to pay to get this second screen and these specs at that time? Of, uh, so you'll not pay extra for the, for the second screen. Uh, you'll pay the price of a premium uh, and, and Android uh, device. Obviously, it depends on the operator what the final consumer price will be. But it'll be priced premium Android uh, device. Premium but it, but it won't be premium by the time it comes. That's what I'm getting at, you know. So so basically, it'll be mid-range by the as, time. As as Vlad mentioned, uh, uh, we are a relatively small company who can quite fast uh, improve the specs of the product. Uh, the, the specs we're showing currently uh, could change and improve by the by the time we launch. We've got a tremendous support from Qualcomm, for instance. We follow closely what they're doing. Um, and we will be ready to introduce anything new if it's if it's uh, if it's ready. Well, our time. target is to have the latest and the greatest yes. again, okay. and we are getting tremendous support. Qualcomm, Corning, by the way, it's uh, covered by Gorilla Glass from both sides. So both sides have Gorilla Glass. Exactly, and, and it's, by the way, the first time you see the three D curved glass from Corning, which is a new product. And again, despite the fact we are startup, uh, I mean. Japan Display, Qualcomm, Corning, Inc. provide us tremendous support because they're very excited about this product. They, they share our, our vision that this is a new type of the smartphone. And uh, I think they will try out their best to help us to bring uh, the latest specs by this time. Okay.